They claim the soul Bible has outlived its day. That there are some changes that need to be made. Let no man deceive. Take your Bibles or turn with me to Matthew 24. Truth is determined by the test of time. Trust the old Bible with its these and that's. Never mind those people who won't throw it out. Churches are drifting and falling away. We need this soul book more than ever Excuse me. Welcome to Empty Cross Ministries Devotional Time. I'm Brother David, and the name of the program is King James Version Exposed. Because we use the King James Version, we break the verses down, bring them to life, and expose the meaning. Today we're going to be looking at the Gospel of John, Chapter 7, and I've entitled this uh, program, this uh, episode anyway, Jesus' Burden. God's Son, who gave us the only way out of hell, should have been loved by all, but he was not. Jesus' own words acknowledged that he had been hated by many. The world cannot hate you, but me it hateth, because I testify of it that the works thereof are evil. That's the Gospel of John, chapter 7, verse 7. Why would the world hate God's only Son? He did no crime. He did no wrong. Only right. This chapter in the Gospel of John sheds some light on why he is hated by the world and even some of the religious crowd. Jesus' teachings were not what the world's churches teach, but what he learned from his Father. Look at the Gospel of John, chapter 7, verse 16. His righteousness exposed 
their unrighteousness. Jesus revealed that the religious Jews did not obey the laws they claimed to follow. Look at the Gospel of John, chapter 7, verses 19, 22, and 23. Jesus revealed that their judgments and discernments were based on what they saw or perceived to be true. They were not making righteous judgments. Look at the Gospel of John, chapter 7, verse 24. Jesus accused the unrighteous religious of not even knowing God. Look at the Gospel of John, chapter 7, verse 28. The Pharisees and others thought that Jesus was deceiving the people. Look at the Gospel of John, chapter 7, verse 47. Christ was to be the sacrifice, so believers in him could go to heaven. Yet these that he came to rescue hated him. What a heavy burden this must have been for Jesus. He knew what they thought of him and how they had treated him. Yet he did what he came to accomplish. What love Jesus has for our souls. Our thought for today comes from the John chapter 15 verse 13. Greater love hath no man than this that a man lay down his life for his friends. There's one word we need to understand before we get to our scripture. That is the word Gentiles. That simply means non-Jews. And I'm going to get a drink of water here before we get to our scripture. Our scripture, once again, is uh, the Gospel of John, chapter 7. I am reading from the King James Version. The Gospel of John, chapter 7, beginning in verse 1. After these things, Jesus walked in Galilee, for he would not walk in Jewry, because the Jews sought to kill him. Now the Jews' feast of tabernacles was at hand. His brethren therefore said unto him, Depart hence. And go into Judea, that thy disciples also may see the works that thou doest. For there is no man that doeth anything in secret, and he himself seeketh to be known openly. If thou do these things, show thyself to the world. For neither did his brethren believe in him. Then Jesus said unto them, My time is not yet come, but your time is always ready. The world cannot hate you, but me it hateth, because I testify of it, that the works thereof are evil. Go ye up unto this feast. I go not up yet unto this feast, for my time is not yet full come. When he had said these words unto them, he abode still in Galilee. But when his brethren were gone up, then went he also up unto the feast, not openly, but as it were, in secret. Then the Jews sought him at the feast and said, Where is he? And there was much murmuring among the people concerning him. For some said, He is a good man. Others said, Nay, but he deceiveth the people. Howbeit no man spake openly of him for fear of the Jews. Now about the midst of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and taught. And the Jews marveled, saying, How knoweth this man letters, having never learned? Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. He that speaketh of himself seeketh his own glory. But he that seeketh his glory, that sent him, the same is true. And no unrighteousness is in him. Did not Moses give you the law, and yet none of you keepeth the law? Why go ye about to kill me? The people answered and said, Thou hast a devil, who goeth about to kill thee? Jesus answered and said unto them, I have done one work, and ye all marvel. Moses therefore gave unto you circumcision, not because it is of Moses, 
but of your fathers. And ye on the Sabbath day circumcise a man. If a man on the Sabbath day receives circumcision, that the law of Moses should not be broken, are ye angry at me, because I have made a man every whit whole on the Sabbath day? Judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. Then said some of them of Jerusalem, Is not this he whom they seek to kill? But lo, he speaketh boldly, and they say nothing unto him. Do the rulers know indeed that this is the very Christ? How be it? We know this man whence he is, but when Christ cometh, no man knoweth whence he is. Then cried Jesus in the temple as he taught, saying, Ye both know me, and ye know whence I am, and I am not come of myself, but he that sent me is true, whom ye know not. But I know him, for I am from him, and he hath sent me. Then they sought to take him, but no man laid hands on him, because his hour was not yet come. And many of the people believed on him, and said, When Christ cometh, will he do more miracles than these which this man hath done? The Pharisees heard that, people, that the people murmured such things concerning him, and the Pharisees and the chief priests sent officers to take him. Then said Jesus unto them, Yet a little while I am with you, and then I go unto him that sent me. Ye shall seek me, and shall not find me, and where I am, thither ye cannot come. Then said the Jews among themselves, Whither will he go, that we shall not find him? Will he go unto the dispersed among the Gentiles, and teach the Gentiles? What manner of saying is this that he said, Ye shall seek me, and shall not find me, and where I am, thither ye cannot come. And the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the Scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Many of the people, therefore, when they heard this saying, said, Of a truth, this is the prophet. Others said, This is the Christ. But some said, Shall Christ come out of Galilee? Hath not the scripture said that the Christ cometh of the seed of David and out of the town of Bethlehem, where David was? So there was a division, a division among the people because of him. And some of them would have taken him, but no man laid hands on him. Then came the officers to the chief priests and Pharisees, and they said unto them, Why have ye not brought him? The officers answered, Never man spake like this man. Then answered them the Pharisees, Are ye also deceived? Have any of the rulers or of the Pharisees believed on him? But this people who knoweth not the law are cursed. Nicodemus saith unto, Nicodemus saith unto them, he that came to Jesus by night, being one of them, doth our law judge any man before it hear him, and know what he doeth. They answered and said unto him, Art thou also of Galilee? Search and look, for out of Galilee ariseth no prophet. And every man went unto his own house. This has been Happy Cross Ministries devotional time on Brother David. The name of the program is King James Version Exposed. We're going to close out here with a prayer and a song. <clears throat> Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your preserved word. Father, we thank you for opening our eyes. And we ask that you do open our eyes in our ears, in our hearts, and our minds, that we might understand and apply your word to our daily lives. Father, you are all-knowing, ever-present, and all-powerful. Father, you know our hearts and our minds. 
We ask that you forgive us when we fall short of what you would have us to do, that when we fall down and bring disappointment to you, that you reach down your hands and pick us back up again, that we might walk in the paths of righteousness. Father, we know that Jesus suffered everything that we suffer. Even the burdens of our hearts, Jesus shared those burdens of the heart. Father, those that he came to save hated him and sought to kill him and indeed did kill him. Yet, Father, we thank you for the victory, the victory that we find on the cross of Calvary, the victory of the empty tomb and the empty cross. Father, be with those that are suffering from any kind of illness or injury, whether it be physical, mental, emotional, or spiritual. We just ask that you put your healing touch upon them. Be with those that are facing the loss of a loved one. Just make your presence known to them in ways that only you can do and in ways that they can see, feel, hear, and understand. Father, we thank you for sending your son Jesus to pay for our crimes upon the cross of Calvary. It's in his name that we pray these things. Amen. Folks, stay safe, be blessed, stay in the word, and write the word upon your heart. One, two, three, two, two.
shall find rest beyond.